Hey, Mary Ann. Hey, Leanne. What's up? I had a great idea. What is it? How about you and I do a podcast? Oh my God, that sounds great. I think we should meet at Ronnie's and have lunch and, and discuss over lunch. Oh, three tacos for me. Rice and beans also. <laughs> okay, I'll see you at the museum. All right, see you there. Buckle up. It's time for Kiwani Memory Lane. Where we cruise down the four lanes of Kiwani history with a detour of fun uncovering the past. Coming to you straight from the Kiwani Historical Society in the heart of downtown Kiwani. Here are your hosts, Marianne and Leanne. Hi, I'm Marianne, and we are coming to you from the Kiwani Historical Society Three Floor Museum of a lot of artifacts that we have, and we are in the heart of downtown Kiwani, the historic downtown Kiwani at Tremont and Second. Yeah, um, our building used to be the Vogue. A lot of people will remember that. It was the Vogue and then the Lou Marge. Both of them were mm -hmm. uh, dress stores, but Pretty right good. now we're sitting here and behind a historic artifact itself. It is the original desk from the Kiwani Public Library. From 1906? From 1906, and Kiwani Public Library is a Carnegie Library, so Mr. Carnegie did help pay for that. And we're appreciative for the public library to donate, for donating this. Mm -hmm. so. And I wish the weather was sunny today, but hey, um, there's a squirrel out that, that out there in the tree. I noticed he's uh, messing around trying to get ready to hunker down for maybe the big winter storm that we have coming. Yeah. I hope not. Maybe a blizzard. You know, it's I January. Just, we know. need some snow. We've been pretty blessed. Yes. I we mean, have. 55 at Christmas. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It. But so, my tree's still up, even though. Oh, know. I took mine down. But did you? It's just you know, it's got to go. I decided to build Legos instead of. Oh, how fun! Well, instead of taking down. What my did tree. you build? I'm in the middle of it, and these old fingers, they feel arthritis. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Any who's. So, um, yeah, we're, if everybody can see the pig out there on top of Breed Loves, that's one of our favorite things to look at here on the second floor of, of the uh, museum. And it's just kind of neat to, to come up here. Um, we are on the top floor. This is my favorite floor. A lot of different st uh, sections for you guys to check out, and I really love just kind of peeking out the window and observing people on a Saturday in downtown Kiwani, kind of what's up, what's happening. Yeah, be careful what you do on 2nd and Tremont, because we were just... We will see you. We will see you, and we will discuss <laughs> your bad parking abilities. Or U-turns and bad parking, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, um, we were going to uh, discuss this desk, and it got moved up here by some very strong gentlemen. It has moved many places last week, last week, last fall. It was the anchor desk for when WQAD visited Channel us. Channel News, they came and they wanted to, they wanted to really highlight Kiwani in the best way. And we were yeah. so yeah. Um, they called so it the they, hometown series. Yep. And they did, I think it was for newscasts, yeah. live newscasts from this desk. And it was just so cool to observe. It was, yeah. And we had visitors come in and just to see what it was all about, yeah. what it was like. And we were really proud to be a part of that, to be able to showcase our museum, but also to help highlight Kiwani in a mm -hmm. positive way. And that's where we're going on this adventure of a podcast, is highlighting Kiwani history, which is what we're all about. And... Leanne and I will study each topic as the best, you know, get as much information as we can. We may make a mistake. Maybe we could be corrected on a fact. But, you know, it's just at that time the best of what we have right, or what right. we've learned. We do enjoy a deep dive into we, some topics. We do it topics. all the time. Yes. Um, I don't know. I guess the term going down a rabbit hole really comes oh, to mind. Yeah. We've done that before on a yes, Saturday. Yes. <laughs> Especially if when we're open during the season and somebody comes into the museum and they want genealogical help and her and I are working together. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> just like, oh, my gosh. Are it's, you on Find a Grave? <laughs> yeah. And so she's on one computer. I'm on another computer. And it's just we have so many resources here that can help you on your genealogical hunt um, for your ancestors or any of your people that uh, lived it's, in this area. Yeah, lived in this area. Yeah. You know, city directories, church uh, directories. I love 
love looking at old fiddle photos of the hairstyles 60s 70s those are a hoot um you know and we can get on find a grave ancestry.com mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. we have a lot of newspaper archives so there's just so much here um and you really can't really see it all in one day so we enjoy visitors as much as possible um and yeah. and we had we did move here from another location and since we uh, moved here we have had i think a record of over 250 people in our museum on a hog days weekend which is just like three breaking times. history yeah it's breaking like three history. times what would so what we, we would and we're just so proud a lot of times we get comments about how nice the museum is how inviting how well organized and it just mm-hmm. it's just really neat to hear that yes you will not be able to see everything in one day no. you might no. be able to go through one binder in mm-hmm. a day mm-hmm. um but we, we do give tours general tours if you're looking for and a reminder we are open um may through the end of october thursdays and saturdays one to four off season leanne and i are here a lot of times on the weekend but if you call ahead make an appointment we're happy to open it up to you mm-hmm. um or do tours that are arranged yeah, sure. like she said mm-hmm. um we're up here doing behind the scenes stuff on displays and whatnot during the winter so yeah especially like um kids groups and stuff mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. i really enjoy you know giving boy scout and girl scout my tours. fun one was like a class reunion for i think it was like a 60 year class reunion uh-huh. and i just love taking the people around and showing them and some oh, of the like things that they cats. found that it was hurting cats that day <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was so fun you were trying to really tour and i was like i gab and i'm like gabbing with somebody and we're looking at artifacts oh he found something that related right, to his family yeah. he just thought and that i'm was really sitting cool. there going okay if we move over here and i'm like but we're still talking <laughs> <laughs> um Mr. Richards, who, uh, Bob Richards, I don't know if a lot of you may remember mm-hmm. him, he helped found the museum in 1976. It started 1976. in 1976. Oh. You know, that was only, what, 25 years ago? I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we, we have a saying around here, God bless Mr. Richards, because nothing not, Basically, nothing would have been kept if it wasn't for him. He preserved so many things. Um, and just to have the forethought to open, yeah. you know, to mm-hmm. just start a, a historical society. I think he was one of the founding members. He, he was, was the first pre- president. He was a president forever. Um, and just to, like, have so many things donated and right, collected was right. just, like, he was definitely ahead of the ahead of the game there so yeah and one of the things that he did and we were just discussing um, off camera that uh, Mr. Richards would have loved podcasts because Mm -hmm. he loved to talk Mm -hmm. and he loved sharing just tidbits and his uh one of his things in the newspaper in um the like 1980 was a thing called fast facts and facts was spelled f-a-x i don't think that it was ever meant to be a fax machine yes it was just like it was uh, just a cheeky way of yes right right and so um he did he did also cut all those out and put them in a binder downstairs with scotch tape so you have to know mr richard i mean i never met him but i appreciate totally what he did but oftentimes we've run into things that lots of scotch tape um, Lots you know. of black sharpie. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. But one of the things he did was fast facts, and so we're going to read one um, every episode and, and discuss it. So, um, today's fast fact was published February fifteenth, nineteen eighty, and it was dated for Wednesday, January twenty ninth, nineteen thirteen. Wow. Yeah. The new officers were named for Kiwani Boiler. Oh. President E.E. E. E. Baker, Baker, of course. Okay. Vice President B.F. Baker, of his course. brother. And assistant to the president, I don't know what that means, but M.F. Moore. The secretary was K.P. Duggar. And Duggar is not a known no, name. No, I've never heard that name, name before. Name in Kiwani. And treasurer was B.F. Baker. Go figure. And I he, wondered if he was a financial officer. That's yeah. kind of how I remembered it. Yeah, yeah, right. And he was assisted by Wallace B. Glidden. And Glidden oh, is a Kiwani that's name an important also. Name. And they had a payroll in 1913. They had a payroll of $667,000. Wow. And 872 employees. And so what would that be equivalent to today? So luckily, I looked that up. <laughs> I'm always curious. Because a lot of the artifacts that we're looking, you know, they mention money. I'm like, what would that be equivalent yeah, to Yeah, so today? according to the Minneapolis uh, Federal, Federal Reserve... Uh, Six hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars in nineteen thirteen. Are you ready for this? Yes. Twenty million, twenty million four hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. Three oh, twenty million 
$445,308.10. And 10 cents. <laughs> but That's 20 hilarious. million dollars holy mackerel i don't i don't want the responsibility overseeing that kind no. of money my checkbook's enough no yeah yeah oh yeah we're i don't even, even do my there. checkbook we're not uh, <laughs> um you know we might have a banking friend so you might not want to say that <laughs> he so, would probably just ah. <laughs> i'm yeah the the fact that the boiler which will probably be a theme for um a future episode mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. uh had a what would we would consider a twenty million dollar, um, a twenty million dollar payroll. Wow, I just can't believe it. I can't either. So I can't either. It's um, really huge. Yeah. So, um, so why did you decide you wanted to to start a podcast? I I think you and I were sitting around on one Saturday and no. Not really. Well, we were actually working, <laughs> not just sitting. Working. <laughs> you have to have breaks. Um, you get in a rabbit hole. I, I, I know. I'll bring that up from time to time. Well, we when we work on Saturdays together, she'll be working. Like recently, she was working on churches, mm-hmm. and I was working on breweries and taverns and stuff like that. How do, they don't go together, no, but just interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't planned. Yeah, uh, no, no. And so we were working together, and uh, she would say, did you know, blah, 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 And then we'd have to look that up. Oh, and of blah, course. Blah, blah. And, then, and they were related to so-and-so, and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they lived here. And, and then I would say, did you know that so-and-so ran this tavern? And um, he was, he was uh, also, you know, sheriff or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. The positive thing is for you, our listeners, is it ge- it gave us a list of topics that we could possibly yeah. be interested in doing a deep yeah. dive to talk about, yeah. you know. And get excited about, because we tend to get excited. Yes, we do. <laughs> I, I'm just an energetic person, and I, you know, that's yeah. just me. So um, so that's kind of how we started. Yeah, but right. My personal reasons are, um, I've always loved learning about Kiwani history. My mom used to drag, not drag, bring us along um, to the museum when we were kids. And when I had kids, then I kind of, you know, did the same thing. I also went to genealogical meeting, society meetings with my mm-hmm. mom at the old Happy Joe's at Main and First. Okay. That's now the okay. parking lot for the Wani Theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, before it was Happy Joe's, it was the YMCA with the pool in the basement. <laughs> but we'll get into that later. <laughs> but it just was really so interesting to me in how far back my mom could go without the benefit of internet. Right. Yeah. And now that I've been able to go even further and I just love it. And it's really um, a passion of mine to do genealogy and to help other people. And that's that's why Mm -hmm. her and I get excited when Mm -hmm. somebody wants to come in and we're like, yeah, that's that's like our that's like our mojo. That's our thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So what about you? Why did you? Well, you know, I remember my first recollection of history. Well, my dad has always loved history, mm-hmm. but I'm not from here. I'm from Southern Illinois. Sorry. You've been here long enough. You count as a Okay. Kimani. Thank you. You do. Okay. Um, some people wouldn't say that, but anyway, not too bad. <laughs> uh, my, my, I remember in eighth grade, one of our writing assignments in my little parochial school was to discuss your family tree. Ooh. And I g- knew parts of it because yeah. I grew up in the area where my dad grew up mm-hmm. and, uh, so he called his sister, who was uh, 20 years older than him. Oh, my. And she was a school teacher, and she loved genealogy, mm-hmm. and she loved history. And mm-hmm. so she brought me this family tree and oh, wow. and the family Bible. So and I cool. was like, okay, I got to know more about this. So then I started doing genealogy and, you know, before the Internet, writing to places. And, mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It was just mm-hmm. took so long. And so for many years, I didn't do it. And then when we when I got married and moved here, I joined the Historical Society, mm-hmm. learned a lot about the area, um, really dug deep into my husband's genealogy because he's from here. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So. Have you found that when you love genealogy, not everybody – you'll find a lot of people don't right. like it. And when they do, it's just so exciting to be able yeah. to have that talk yeah. with somebody right. because most right. people, their eyes glaze over, their yeah. eyeballs roll back. So this is just really right. It gets you pumped. I so. think I think that in every this is this is my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, in every generation, mm-hmm. there is one person in every family, and I call them the keepers. Mm-hmm. And so in my family, obviously, I'm the keeper because I collect the knowledge. I you know do all that, 
And my son doesn't really care about it, but he knows about it. <laughs> so when I didn't get to meet either of my grandmothers. So my mm. maternal grandmother, um, she she wrote journals from 1917 to 1959. Wow, and so it's just neat to read you them. Still and have kind those? Of, I do. Oh, I that'd do. be fun. And it's just neat to, to be able to get a glimpse back. She right. might have written wrote in there like how much a loaf of bread was on any given date or who came to visit mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. and she oftentimes in her notebooks wrote the family tree out yeah and i think she got my mom started so my mom was the, the was the keeper uh-huh. and now i'm the keeper right you know, my mom right. has passed away and even before she just said now it's your turn yeah and mm-hmm. so i have a lot of the family photos and whatnot so. oh that's fun yeah and i just yeah. love kiwani history too so yeah. We did yeah. our first annual trivia last year. Yes, we did. So that, exciting. Oh, that was fun. Oh, and, lots of planning. And we already wrote our 100 questions for this one that's coming up in April. April 20th. Be There'll there, be flyers be and stuff going mm-hmm. out. And this year's theme is going to be 100 years of history. And it was hard. Hard. It was hard to write all the questions, but we did yeah, it. We, we persevered. Did it. Yes, we did it. Finished it just now. <laughs> so it's our baby. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So it's going to be uh, 1901 to 2000 because, you know, 2000 was 23 years ago. I still can't believe that. I'm only 25. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know how, you know, I have a child 24 <laughs> and I'm only like 28. But yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. Things happen, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, um, I just you know hopefully the the topics that we come up with are going to be of interest of people to people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i know that you were doing some bar and brewery stuff so that you kind of got into a lot of the history of the bootlegging yeah yeah and did about every neighborhood have a bootlegger at least seriously at least one why do you think they were bootlegging other than the obvious question that there was prohibition right right okay but what would be like a, a let's say a widow woman what would be her um, what would be her reason to, 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 to do bootlegging? Well, you know, a, there was, it was an easy way to make money because, okay, you know, the, it just, the, the topic fascinates me. Mm-hmm. Prohibition in Kiwani and all the stuff that goes on, went on with, mm-hmm. The underworld of Kiwani. The Which, underworld of Kiwani. That's another episode. <laughs> yeah, that's later. An, yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah. So I've read one of the things that you showed me on our Saturdays of working and talking um, that they would have mash that the police were looking for yeah. and just all the hooch. I call it hooch. Yeah, um, it was. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah it the... There's some funny... And the, they're funny to us now, you know... 100 years later. Yeah. But I can imagine that these stories were were your life, you know. What I find really interesting is how sometimes they had a way to hide the mm-hmm. evidence when the police mm-hmm. came. Yeah. They maybe yeah. had a secret wall or a secret yeah. whatever. I wonder well, if those ever exist. You know, I love going into the buildings that are historic here. I know. Mm-hmm. We've had no, a few I tours don't. that we yes. will. And it's just neat to be able to get inside and say, hey, what? I'm curious by nature, so yeah. this has been, it's been fun, yeah. you know, and so if anybody, no, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on quite a few adventures, yeah. uh, legal and illegal, but, you know, <clears throat> <laughs> maybe there'll be a topic of trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask for forgiveness later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, but yeah. it's all to benefit you guys. Yes, and history itself, mm-hmm, and yeah, mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. fun for us. Yeah, for sure. Um, for yeah. sure. And we were able to do this, too, with our friend John Looney. Um, he's helping us out, doing some produ- production, producing our, for us, advising. Yeah, producer, John. Uh, great coach. So we really mm-hmm. appreciate John. So, yeah. yeah. Just wanted to throw that in there now. Yeah, before we forget. Yeah. So, yeah. The um, Kiwani Historical Society, like I said, it was started in 1976. I just, I just, you know. I think I was seven. I was. Yes, I'm aging I was, myself. I was seven. I was four. Okay. And yeah, I can't think about when they were when they were collecting the stuff. They were collecting things, say, fifty years prior. So we have a lot of stuff mm-hmm. um, from the twenties and before because mm-hmm. that's where their grandparents basically were getting rid of things and yeah. donating and yeah. stuff like that. Whereas now, 50 years from now, it was 19, uh, previous was 1970. 
Right. And so what we would love to do here is to up our history a little bit. Look at, you know, trying to obtain things from 60s, 70s, 80s. I was at high school in the 80s. I just cannot believe <laughs> that it's history already. It's history. Oh, my God. When you heard Madonna as Muzak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or when you go to a grocery store and they play that music and you find yourself yeah, singing and singing. dancing with the car and you embarrass your kids. Yeah. It's that's like, wow. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> my it's my right you yeah know? that's right so you to embarrass you. um but yeah but yeah so we're also looking for like donations and photographs and stuff like that of uh kiwani from the 70s 80s 90s so. one of my favorite memories of being in kiwani as a teenager and hanging out was at um the skating rink wheels away okay um, was that was that the where was that was that where that became tenny bowl and okay. now that's been it's, demolished uh, down. yeah um but just to go in there on a friday saturday night see it packed not it started as piggly wiggly oh that's right the grocery store <laughs> wasn't there a lumber store around there too or was it just that might have been in front of it by like i the do bank. not know okay. i just know that was we'll figure it out but um somehow yeah they made it into a roller rink you walked in the front door off of mcclure you you, you traded in your shoes for some skates that you hoped were you know sprayed and whatnot <laughs> this is like and not clean yeah i know i'm trying not to, i'm trying not to be a jerk but um and then you can take a ride go to the snack bar get a pepsi get whatever um find your friends um i really thought i was like really cool on the floor i could skate backwards do Ooh. the figure eight you know and just the disco music yes again <laughs> dating myself but it was like just it was just the bomb <coughs> friday saturday night Mom, drop us off at the, please drop us off at the the uh, skating rink and just really had like a good five time. five bucks and. I don't even remember how much it costs. So that's one thing is I would like to find more history about the Wheels Away or any pictures. Um, mm -hmm. That's one thing we're lacking here. And was that um, the only skating rink in town or was there another one like <sighs> There was one before my time where okay. fire station number two is. At okay. Mountain 8. Okay. That that's where. I think it was more like a tent like structure with some walls it's really weird we have a few pictures it's really weird okay. um and i do think way on the south end of town um out by uh los ranchitos i think maybe a little further south there might have been one out there too i don't remember the name okay um it escapes me but those was, are the ones was that at the same time as the wheels away because that's kind of no, weird that oh okay. that would have been okay. earlier that would say been that'd earlier. be kind of weird to have because i think wheels skaters. away was the last one okay and i know kiwani used to have three bowling alleys um I only ever went to, I think, Durable and Tenny Bowl. Um, I did not, for whatever reason, did not get into Play More Lanes, which I think was torn down in 95. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A lot of Play buildings was in downtown the... Kiwani were torn mm -hmm. down in 95. I don't know what it was about Play 95. Playmore was on Chestnut and 2nd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, over Across from Pioneer Across or... Yeah. Boiler room, what it, uh, dome, what it, what do you want to call it? Yeah, it depends what generation you are. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to call it? So, um, another one of my favorite memories was going into the Jupiter store, which is a weird name, but Kresge's, which was a five and ten, mm -hmm. I believe you said. Yes. Um, you could enter off of Tremont or Second Street, and it was an L-shaped store, wooden floors. I can remember walking in with my mom on the wooden floor. I can still hear it, and it was just kind of almost. To me, liquidation type stuff, for my memory, okay. like cheapy stuff. And this was as oh, this was Jupiter. This is when it was Jupiter. Yeah, my husband remembers mm -hmm. remembers yeah. Jupiter. And then for whatever reason, they um, went out of business. A lot of different things have been in there. Most recently, it um, was P.L. Dameron's restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other part that goes on to Second Street. Um, it was Conley's Classics for a long time, the antique store. Okay, okay. And now, That's right. Yeah. Now is it the gallery on second, I think? No, it is the... Uh, I don't want to turn around and look right now. But. I am. No. Um, <laughs> it is the Vegas. Okay. Oh. Is, is that what it's called? I don't yeah, remember. Another yeah, another gambling place. Sorry, people. Yeah. Um, But, but anyhow, um, P.L. Dameron's then, they did um, become the downtown eatery. Interesting story, Leanne and I, Lee and I, we were able to uh, take a tour. Um, <laughs> we saw the first level, of course, every, who hasn't? We're going for ghost stories now. Um, we were on the second <laughs> level. Oh my God, going up the stairs, oh my gosh. Like I already felt something and it just felt like, oh, it just felt like the vibe was off for me. Yeah, but I, totally. I wanted to like, I gotta see this. Yes, yes. Cause that's just my nature. And it's, and it's completely original up there. It's, oh yeah. The, Oh yeah. yeah, totally original. The only thing new up there is the uh, air, air conditioner units. Yeah. Um, but when you go in the this huge room and there's like glass blocks on the floor that would have been like 
bringing light from yeah, the upper, directly into yes, the skylights. Down to the yeah. main. That was pretty neat to see. But the further we got to the the front of the building, <laughs> I was like, I gotta get out of here. So, yeah. <laughs> and and she's like, Leanne, did you did you feel that? I'm like, yeah. I said we can go now. I was like, did you? I go, I don't know what that is, but we gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of fun. Yeah. Um, and 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 the owners, they're not Todd and Jody. Very nice people. Um, he offered to show us the basement sometime. Uh, we have not made that appointment yet. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm okay not going. I, I kinda, Although I do think that it's way cool that all the I, I say all I've not been in all of them, but the, we kind of know. Yeah, the buildings on the 300, 200 block mm-hmm. of is it two hundred? Two hundred. Yeah, we're one twenty five. Okay, two hundred block of North Tremont. They're all connected. Like yep. all the buildings are connected. Like um, in when when there were all stores there, you could walk from store to store without going outside. I think that's fascinating. And I know that they were connected on the first floor and in the basements. And sometimes they would share loading docks and things like that off the back side. And so there was needed I'm, to be. I'm being a little sus here. Like, what, why do you think they all had doors connecting? Like, I just when I you think have that's a store, weird. What was it securely locked? Because I'm all about security. I really am. And so, like, did a door lock on one side or the other? Did it, was it free reign? I mean, I, what would be a reason to have these? You have I, an edifice at your storefront. Yeah. Why would you want somebody else coming in? I don't get it. I don't know either. Could there have been some oh. illegal activities going on on the second Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think we're going to have to check that out. What do you guys think? I think so, too. I think so. We're, I think we're going to have to do that. That's very cool. Okay. Okay. I know where there's a few of the doors, but I don't know. Okay. You know. We'll have to call Phil Good and see if... Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's kind of in that area. Yeah. We could ask Phil. Maybe yeah. he can help us out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That All right. sounds like a plan. So, okay, let's mark that down as a, as a I'm kinda future topic. Where are we at with time, Leanne? Oh. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. Because like, I could talk all day. 20, we're at 25 minutes. Oh, great. Okay. So oh. one of the things that we have coming up, too, is we want to talk about... Prohibition, Kiwani, it started in 1914, ahead of federal prohibition, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, like, the national level. Yes, like and, way before, like six years before. Yeah, and um, just a lot of, I have been researching with Leanne and a lot of these places in the 20s, um, a lot of uh, illegal activities, jam, gambling and drinking and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, but the brick, a lot of people in Kiwani are going to know about the brick. That really, the building itself was built in 1923, and that's a whole nother episode, and I don't want to give it all away now, but, I mean, it was really active and well-known for people, I think, 40s, 50s, 60s. And mm-hmm. they had a fire there in 71. That was kind of the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of did a lot of research there and think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and I think, um, like you said, the my deep dive is going to be into Prohibition mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. downtown Kiwani and the players and that. And everybody was... Everybody knew everybody You know, else. I think and there was a guy named Gint Hippert. And he yeah. would always have mm-hmm. a little cigar. Yeah. Like a nice, yeah. chewy cigar <laughs> hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And I did find that there was there was a street we would never knew about. Really? Yeah. It what was, was it called? Windsor Court. Windsor Court. Where was that? It is currently the alley between, right here up on in the second second block of North Tremont, between Tremont and Third, and Tremont Third, that'd be funny. Tremont and Chestnut, next like the bank, uh huh, alley behind, oh, wow, behind Cernos and and all that. So kind of where they had the Bat Cave for the Pioneer. Right, right, right. Oh wow, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and what was so, back there? Booze. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> there Sorry. were back doors of a lot of things back there. So but I wonder, yeah. did yeah, they have so like a secret door, or was it just? We'll talk about that. I think. Okay. Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. I know there was one bar downtown. I was younger and kind of curious, and I never went inside. I always wanted to, but they had this like little, um, almost looked like a mail slot in the door. So I flipped it up, and there was eyes looking out at me. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, I, I okay. I just went somewhere else. <laughs> that was kind of funny. So um, I know we're going to talk about the Fire Forty Two. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have a curiosity about the Fire Forty Two and how it affected. Uh, our economy and just people and um, my dad I guess participated I didn't know in helping the firefighters oh really Um, my aunt told me um, my aunt lives in New York 
gosh, I think she's 87 now. So, you know, she was sharing a lot of family memories with me. And she was telling me how my dad uh, brought her up as a an eight-year-old. And he was 14. And they walked here from North Walnut Street. And he was helping the firemen move hoses so they could battle the fires. Oh. And she stood in the, in the background watching. And she was just very proud of her brother, my dad, help, mm. being able to help. And yeah. just that she got to witness. I mean, the, it was a tragedy. But, um, yeah, just that she was able to, to see it. That's, to that's see it in action. That's a fascinating thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. For and some reason, Kiwani has had a lot of fires. Yeah. So. Hmm. Mm. No, I don't think that they were all. Well, I'm not saying they weren't planned. But well. we know of one that was planned. The Earl Hotel fire was yes, was planned, but yes. we'll talk about that on a future episode too. Yeah. I think. I'm trying to think, what is? Um, I know E.U. Baker. He's on our he's on our list right, of right. topics. Um, Kiwani Parks. Uh, we're fortunate for a small town to have a, the number of parks that we do have. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember well being, maintained parks. Too. Yes, and I remember being at Northeast Park and swimming in the old Olympic sized pool and. Friday night free swims were the best. Of course, it was packed. It was hot, but you just were mm. able to get wet. Um, mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. were the best. And just being able to play on the playground. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was never a golfer, but Baker Park's beautiful. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, uh, and now they have that disc golf through through the woods. I don't know if I'd be able to. Have you ever tried that? No. And have you ever looked at how it's done at Baker Park? It's like through the brush. It, well, how I don't. I, I would lose them all. You're a Girl Scout leader, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. can and you identify Scout. and Boy Scout leader? Can you identify poison ivy and poison yes. oak? Okay, I I haven't like really done the homework. You know how you do it? How you get itchy? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so but, <sighs> well, there's that problem too. But it's like the. Where you have to, first of all, you'd have to learn how to throw a frisbee. Mm-hmm. I can or do that. disc or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, with aim. With like through a tunnel. <laughs> right. That's, that's what's our guy. How do they score it? Do you know? Is it like no, golf, I, golf? I, okay. I have no idea. Yes, okay. it must be because um, there's pars and stuff oh, on the baskets okay. and stuff like that. But My husband, he's a golfer. Maybe he could tell oh, us. Yeah. I don't know. So. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. When I was growing up, we had so many neighborhood grocery stores. Yeah. Um, Samara's was in my neighborhood, okay. John and mm-hmm. Albert Samara. Um, their family immigrated here many, many years ago. Um, they had stores on uh, West 6th Street. I went to the one on 9th Street, and yeah. I remember walking in and seeing the candy case full of can- the glass case full of right, candy. Right, right. They, they had a penny corner. They had five-cent corner, 10-cent, 25. You know, mm-hmm. the chocolate candy bars, you're getting into some big money. Yeah, right, right. But the little, you know, the little smarties, that might have yeah. been five cents. So. Yeah, by the time I got here, there were only a few left. I okay. remember Lappins. Yeah. And they had the smiley face cookies. I don't know that. I just know it was Lappins. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. And I think that the one, um, um, I don't know which what the name of it was on a division and Elliot. Oh, rations. Rations. Yes. That's rations. I, yes. Okay. So yes, I know I, that there was a lot of, as you can action. tell, we have a lot to talk about yes. and we are eager to do this, but we want to wrap up and just thank a few people. Yeah. Um, I want to thank John Looney, who is our, uh, production master and um the historical society and their board for allowing us Mm -hmm. to do this Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. being agreeable yes um all you listeners and watchers out there we appreciate it and mr bob richards for really starting all of this so that it can become what it is now yeah to learn more about kiwani historical society um you can give us a call and or come visit um you can join Facebook. We have a group called um, Kiwani Nostalgia. And our website is uh, kiwani-history.com. Right. And thank you for listening and watching. Yeah. And we'll see you at the museum. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for cruising with us today. We hope you enjoyed the show and you'll join us for our next cruise down, Kiwani Memory Lane.